Hey, good morning. So I just decided I'm going to just do a random live today because I'm just playing with some of this um, vintage or salvage patina. Um, trying to see if I can make up a, a little card to send to my mom for Mother's Day. Yes, it's probably going to be late. But my thought is that a card is a good time, a good thing to have no matter what, what time, when you get it. So, um, so yeah, so I'm just going to play with some vintage patina. I have all of the different ones. I have the stain, spray stain. I have the oxide uh, spray. I have the ink pads. I have the embossing glaze and the paint um, and the re-inker. Re and I have some stamps and some other things. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to stay on here really long, but um, I do want to try to do a little bit of time. I just thought it'd be fun because I was going to do a recording and then I thought, you know, I can just do this live. So, um, I've already been playing with some, and I'm not really the most, I'm still learning about the stain and the spray because, uh, for distress, I'm fine when it comes to acrylic sprays. Those are great. You just spray them on and they're good, but I'm still trying to figure out the best way to approach using distress stain and dis distress, distress oxide spray. So, um, this is a piece of Ranger watercolor paper. I probably sprayed it on the wrong side. There's probably two sides and I probably put it on the wrong side, but that's okay. That's why it's called exploring and learning, right? And so um, I just went at it with some uh, Distress Oxide Spray. My bottle is very messed up because of the it leaked a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, I just kind of went crazy on the paper spraying it. And then I went back and added in some stain, some just distress stain, which this is, this reacts to water. The oxide reacts to water. And then um, this one is different in that it doesn't, it, it's more saturated, but I think it still does something with water it, to blend. So I don't know, <laughs> I'm still learning. I have watched, I watched the, um, I've watched Tim Holtz's videos about it. I never really absorbed what he was talking about because when I was watching him, I, it was new. I was new, so I'm probably gonna go back and watch this again. But this was so much liquid on there, so wet. I went back and I have some of these, and I forgot you're not really supposed to put wet media on this cardstock. It is just not meant for wet media. But um, this is a card base that I have um, from I think Doris. Darius, and so I just went and smushed that on there. You get some really interesting effects. This is mostly, I think, the oxide. Um, I probably added some water because I know you're supposed to add water on oxide. It's supposed to react to water so that you can get some cool effects. This is a, a piece of heavy stock craft, or not craft, but um, Manila, I guess, from Ranger, from Tim Holtz. Oh, it's called Distress Mixed Media Heavy Stock, which I know is meant for literally using with wet media. So that's why I grabbed that one. Also, I thought the watercolor would, paper would be really good. So I'm just playing around. Um, but unfortunately, because this is a, a craft or, a you know, this color is like a manila color. Um, it, it's a little different, but I like it. It's okay. I don't mind that it's got a little bit of this creamy color. It doesn't look bad with the blue, with the... Um, salvage patina colors. I like the different greens and blues that are in here. I really haven't gotten to play with this yet. So this is just me playing. Um, I've got some ideas of what I want to try to do and we'll probably won't be able, I probably won't achieve that because just you can't really decide what you're going to do when it comes to this kind of stuff because it's just, it's crazy unless you really, really know what you're doing, which I don't. So I'm just gonna, let me try this again. I did this earlier and it totally smushed underneath the stencils. So let me try it again. It might be just too liquid. It looks okay there, right? I did that one there, but then it just, it just goes everywhere. So I think if I really want to do the stencil, I probably need to do, um, I probably need to do it with just the ink. Plus, this was just going to be a background. I was going to layer this onto a card. So I wasn't really trying to get anything too fancy. Just trying to see what I can create, right? 
Let's see what I can get if I just do this. If you guys have any suggestions, give me your suggestions and I will try it. I'm open. This is completely impromptu live and I just want to play. And so otherwise you can just watch me destroy this paper with with a uh, spray. And because I never know when I don't I'm not very good at knowing when to stop on these kind of things. So if you can give me some guidance, this is definitely out of my comfort zone as far as things go. But why not do a live when you're outside of your comfort zone, right? So, okay. So I think I threw a lot of wet media on this one. Oh, I didn't, I don't think, I know I did. I threw a lot of wet media on this. It's kind of a neat modeled background. Um, I've done the smushy stuff before where you smush the ink on there. Let me just hit it some with some heat. I wanted to try to see what I could, if I added in some of the purple. Since purple is our color for this month, we're focusing on purple for the Peacecraft Love Color Challenge. Yes, there is a hashtag, PCL Color Challenge. Um, anything you make with purple, it doesn't have to be from the store. Just um, post a picture of something you made with purple and then tag PCL Color Challenge and tag me, and, um, Peacecraft Love, and you can, uh, that's kind of pretty. You can be entered to win a $25 gift card at the end of the month, announced on June 1st. And for now, we only have, I think, one post that's not mine that's in the PCL Color Challenge for purple. And so um, there's a lot of openings in there. You can, a lot of people can join. So it's open to any medium, anything you want that's purple. Just Use purple and then tag me and tag the tag the uh, the tag. <laughs> and I don't care if you post every single day or if you just post once. The more you post, the more times that you'll more entries you'll get. All right, so that was kind of fun. I think once I dried it, it really it did fade right because it's going to, but it's still kind of a neat. If you just took a section and put that on the back of a card or on a card, that would be pretty. I like what this is doing. This also looks very watery colory right up here. So that's kind of nice. I don't like the smudged flower, but. And again, this is really the same. This is the same uh, product. These are the two, these are both the same product. They just have a very different look. I think the yellowish color in the background, the cream has is really reacting to the blue in the ink in the spray. And so that creates kind of an interesting blue color. Let's just get rid of that flower. Oh, goody. We can just make it a splot all over the paper. Ooh, that's pretty. And then um, you can, I, I understand that you can take water when your water bottle works and just spritz it to create some interesting look. Okay, so that should be fun once it dries. I'm not very good at waiting for things to dry, honestly. That's probably why I don't use spray very much. And this cardstock looks like it is interesting. That's some really cool effect there. I don't know if that's just because of the paper. A little bit too much water on the paper. You know me. I don't know when to say when on <laughs> this kind of stuff. So, all right. So... And that flower is kind of coming out more, which is interesting. I was trying to cover it up, and now it's kind of coming out. Okay, so we're working on our background for our card. I'm going to make a card for my mom and probably one for my mother-in-law, because if I'm going to make one, I might as well make two, right? Um, I have some friends that I would like to send cards to also. And if I'm going to make two, I might as well make more. And again, I said this earlier, but... Um, so, I'll say this this way. I was listening to the radio this morning, and the DJ said, Oh, well, most moms say that they want to get cards for, for Mother's Day. And it's too late for me to send my mom a card, because she lives all the way across the country. This is what this DJ is saying on the radio. She lives across the country. If I mail it today, she won't get it by Sunday. 
And he said, so I'll just send her some flowers instead. Because that was like the number two thing on the list of things moms want. And I said, I even went on their Facebook page and I said, hey, look, a card is a nice thing to get anytime. It doesn't have to be on the day that is a special day everywhere, right? Everybody, we want, cards are nice to receive at any time. And sometimes they're nicer to receive when it's a random day. And not just because it's a special day when everybody expects to be uh, recognized, you know? So... That's what I said, because I couldn't help it. Not because I sell products to make cards, but because that was my per personal opinion that you can't just say, well, I'm not going to send her a card because it's not Mother's Day anymore and it's going to get there late. You know, if you mail it today, you might be surprised that it gets, if it gets, that it gets there by Sunday. I mean, there's no mail delivery on Sunday anyway, right? So not U.S. mail. All right, so now that this has made a really interesting and a neat effect in the background there. And since, you know, um, I was gonna cut it up, but I'm thinking we should try adding some purple. Should we try adding some purple? Blues and purples are very friendly with each other, so should we do, yeah, these are both oxides. I have a milled lavender and a wilted violet. I like the wilted violet better. And oh, Ranger, you always make it so fun to open these. This is just the oxide though. I didn't, I didn't get myself the stain for some reason on the purples. I just decided not to this time. Not that I couldn't do it tomorrow or later, but I think I just want to learn to do oxides more. But that's the problem is I, I do mostly art journaling. So doing something where you have to, where you're going to, um, you can't really put it over acrylic media. So, or matte media or anything like that. It needs to have something that it can soak into. So that's how I see it. At least I don't know that that's, you know, a hundred percent sure true, but in my experience, if you're trying to spray it on something that has matte medium or acrylic paint on it, it's not gonna it's not gonna soak in. It's just not gonna work. It's gonna sit there forever. So um, So I told myself, okay, this time I'm going to start with paper. Just start with the paper. Okay. You're starting with some paper that is very has a lot of paper, has a lot of stuff on it. Let me see if I have any other. Nope. I think I might be out or I've misplaced it, but I have some um, Alta New cardstock that is watercolor cardstock that is cut to the right, to like a card size. And it's kind of nice. Okay, so we're just gonna spray. Woo, let's get the spray going. Ooh, ooh, splotches, and because it's oxide, oh, it kind of covered up some of that. Okay, this is very bright. I think it's interesting. Covered up that purple. <laughs> okay, oh, water. So I think, try to see what happens if you spritz it. Not only does it make it run, but it also is when it dries, I think it's going to make a nice mottled effect here. Unfortunately, it doesn't really, it's kind of just covering up the blue. It's so dark. Did you guys know that was going to happen? I wonder if you know that was going to happen. It's going to just cover up that blue. Again, this is going to, the plan is for this to be a background. So, ooh, let's try the lighter color. So, um, it's not going to be a full on, this is what it's going to look like, right? This is just the background. And maybe someday I'll actually get to the actual card. <laughs> but I love baking backgrounds, especially when I'm playing. 
Okay. Note to self, next time, open all products before doing a live. You have to say, and see, this is what I do. I open it around the edges here, around the bottom, where there's a little bit of a gap. I just cut it with my scissors right there, around that gap, and then I swipe it up, and it helps to cut that plastic. Let's see what happens when we do the light purple. The, um, what's this one called? Mild lavender. It's a very light purple. Very much lighter. Ooh, my whole desk just got purpled. <laughs> embrace the messy. Hashtag embrace the messy. Seems like there's something. Okay. I like. I, I like that effect. I see. I think it's uh, it's very light, <laughs> but it lightened up my my uh, wilted violet a little bit. Wilted, yeah, violet. There are so many different purples. All right. Feel free to comment at any time about what you think because I'd love to hear your thoughts. You think I should do something different? Try the gloss spray, try the something else. Let me know and I'll do it. This one's getting a little crazy, don't you think? Okay, I gotta put it aside and let it dry. I'm gonna put it over here and let it dry because it is, I'm just gonna turn that into mush. The wilted violet is so light. Oh, this is a uh, milled lavender. It's so light. I feel like there's something on my sprayer because it's. Um, what if I did a little bit on here? What if I did this? I like those. That's why I'm kind of doing this. Gloss spray. Okay. Yeah, I like the gloss spray too. I was just trying to figure out if I could... How much fun I could have with the, um, with the oxides. Actually, I just got this really nice gloss spray called Night. It's a dark, dark color. And I just got that in, back in stock in the store. So if you do a little, little, some little dots and then you spritz them, then you can get a different effect. Okay, gloss spray. You wanna do gloss spray on this one? It's sort of dried. Eggplant. I don't have a gloss spray. Um, Savage Patina doesn't come in gloss spray, but. So somebody was asking about sprays that are not, or colors that are not as bright or glossy. Somebody I saw before, they said they didn't like glossy. I would say the oxides and the stains are perfect. The problem is they're just not really gonna work over the acrylic. So you have to really, oh look, it just soaked right in. Hmm, interesting. Not expected. And covered up on my salvage patina too. Interesting. Um, so Dina Wakely is doing a demo on Saturday on her Facebook page. She's going to do a live demo around, I think, noon central time. She has it posted in all the places. Um, the gloss spray didn't do anything there. So that's interesting. I thought it would be more glossy, but it really didn't. It really just soaked in more. That one's a little bit different. See? 
That one did okay. Um, so she's going to do some a demo on Saturday. That's not the right lid. Um, I don't know which one of these is the right lid. For ways to use gloss spray that's not spraying it. So that's interesting. I'm looking forward to that one. All right, I've totally, I put some gloss spray on there. It didn't really do much, but that was an interesting experiment, right? Ooh, it's very, very wet. So, um, playing with stuff. Okay. I was just looking at the way that the, that the water, how it reacted to the water. It had some really neat vein looking effect there. So I wanted to see if I could kind of get that to happen again. All right. So let's see if we can move on to doing, let's see, I have about 10 minutes on my timer. So I want to see if I can make a, make some sort of the sentiment or whatever I'm going to put on the front of my card. Um, which is fun because I have no clue because I was looking at my stamps earlier. And I do have a lot of stamps, but, um, and I have a lot more in the store, right? Um, but let's see. This is the part of card making where I always get a little stuck. If you can't tell. So here's my card, right? And this is a big card. It's not even. And let's just say we're going to cut a piece that looks like this. And then are we going to... not going to stamp on it we have to stamp on something else so we might stamp on this on this actually stamp on that we might stamp on um here's some regular card stock already cut i like the ones that are already cut because you know makes life easier of course we'll probably get them all messy but Let's see, what can we stamp on it? So, I was thinking about using this set with the little owls. It's kind of kooky. A butterfly is also always a good idea, right? If I do anything that I think I'm going to watercolor it or color it in any way, I probably want to use. What I want to use this one. I'm just being very indecisive. Okay, let's do the owl. Because it says, Thank you for owl you do. I thought that was cute. Okay. Now. I don't know where to, where, which one to do. Okay, raise your hand. Haha. <laughs> Comment if you know that you're supposed, if you've heard that you are supposed to condition your stamps when the, the, the clear ones, the rubber ones, it doesn't matter. But that there's a way to kind of prep your stamps before you use them when it's a brand, this is a brand new set. Well, brand new to me. This is not a new set, but it's a brand new, and I have it in the store, but it's it's not new. So let me know if you have heard that before. And I'm gonna just stamp this on here, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, I'm gonna position it, but it doesn't matter because I'm gonna cut it out anyway. And somewhere, I think I have the dies to cut these out, which is part of the reason that I Let 
I'm just going to do three owls. That'll fit on there. And the, the sentiment. Okay, and then I'm going to show you how to do that. Using the eraser. Yep, that's how I do it too. Okay, so this is what I learned. That you should use or can use an eraser. And I'm trying to find one. I really actually just use any eraser I can find. Some companies actually sell little erasers. I actually have one... You know, it's like a a pencil. It's like for drawing, and it's like a micro eraser. But I think you can just really use any. I use a white eraser, and you just you can see what I'm doing. You just erase over it, and there's some sort of a film or something on the on the stamp that um. The first time that you use it, it's something to do with when they man manufacture it. Um, it just makes it not grab the ink the first time. So if you come in and do this, and then my understanding is, so I, I read a whole bunch about it. Wipe it on your jeans or, or rub it on your jeans or I don't wear jeans that much or <laughs> use an eraser or... Um, I have this thing called a stamp chamois for cleaning it. So rub it with an eraser. This is what I do. I rub it with an eraser. And then I'm just doing this. This is a stamp chamois. You just get it wet and it makes it nice and good for cleaning your stamps. Okay. And then I'll take my, I think you take any ink and any old piece of paper. I'm not making the table do. It's what I use. It. It's white. Okay. Yep. I think the white eraser just works better for in general. Okay. And then I stamp it anywhere as just a first stamp. Okay. And that actually stamped really well. So yay for that. Okay. So now that that's stamped, I call this conditioned now. I don't really do anything else. Oh no, I got ink on my paper. <laughs> I always do that. I always get ink on it. Okay. So now, because I'm just going to do these, I'm going to do them in black, and then I think I'm going to use my, probably my Tombows or my Pit Pens. I have some of these to color them. Maybe. I don't know yet. I like watercolor, but I don't think this paper is going to hold up to watercolor. It's really just cardstock. All right, so I'm gonna do it in black. And the thing that gets me is I'm never good at doing sentiments on cards. I just, I don't know the right way to do them. So any suggestions? I see people do embossing and, um, oh great, sandpaper. Um, so I, I don't know if, I, could, I don't think I could figure out embossing. I'd like to try it, but I, it, it always seems hard when I try to do it. It doesn't really work the right way. So I should just practice it some more, shouldn't I? Okay. Hey, look at that. Okay, so that little corner didn't quite go as well as it could have. So that's the good thing about the stamp positioner, right? Is that you can just re-ink that. And then, just in case these guys still have any ink on them. Oh, I got a little bit. That's okay. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's a little double. It's a little bit double. Um, Cause see, they did have ink on them, and they might have gotten it smudged. Okay. I might redo the sentiment anyway, because why not? All right, so then you go and, oh, I think this is the part I forgot to do. You can take your stamp chamois and just clean the ink off. Some people, I, I actually have archival ink cleaner, like stamp cleaner, 
but honestly I like having it stamped black because now I can actually see the dang thing because before it was clear and I couldn't see it. Now I can actually see it when I'm positioning it on there. So if I really wanted to, I could use my archival stamp cleaner to clean it. And I think that would get the clean, you know, archival ink off of there, but so. So apparently, yeah, conditioning your stamps, if it's a, just a standard, uh, what clear acrylic or not acrylic, but polymer stamp, um, you would run it some, just do something to rub it uh, before you use it and then ink it and stamp it once before. And I, I didn't realize that I, I found out by accident and then it turns out that it really does make a difference from what I found. Oh, my timer's already done. Okay. Okay, well, um, let's see if we can cut these guys out and get them put on my card. Okay, so I think... If I had done that one a little bit further down, I could just use them as is, but yeah, that would have required thinking about it, so. Unless you think he looks like he's just jumping. <laughs> he could just look like he's jumping. It is very different for them to be white in the background. Again, cards, not my, not my forte. But I'm trying, because this is for my mom. We have She has three kids, so hopefully she'll get the reference of the three, three owls. Maybe if I ink around the edges, it'll look cute, right? I can get away with that, or do I need to do a bigger piece? Also, it's kind of smudgy. Oh, and I had this on top, on top of something else that's wet. Okay, I think I'm gonna use this one, and I'm gonna... I have a desk that I said is for my dry area of working with paper, and I always forget that I have it. And so I, and I actually, it's covered with things right now. This is a five. It's a very large card, five by seven. So if I cut it at, I just want a small, small little bit off, four and a quarter. I'm not very good. Okay, whoa, let's just. Anybody anybody have a suggestion for matting? Okay, let's just do it this way. Four and a half, that seems pretty big. Four and a quarter, or too small. Four and a quarter. Give ourselves a quarter inch around there. And then the other side was seven, so we'll do six and a quarter. Six and a quarter. And if we think we need to cut it, whoops, trim it a little more, we'll do a little more. Oh, it's not even. <laughs> okay, seven. Oh, I did six and a quarter. I totally cut it off by an inch. Yeah, well, you know, it's whatever. Let me just trim it down a little more. This is how I fly. I make stuff up. These cards are very big. Let me just say that. But, you know. 
now there aren't, isn't as much room for the for the little dudes. Okay, guys, so what do you think if we take this and dab around the edges with a spongy sponge? Is anybody else making cards for their? I'm sure y'all y'all have already. If you make cards, you've probably already finished making them a long time ago. All right. Now it's time to make Father's Day cards. If you're not like me and do everything last minute, live. good part is I know how to do this so if I don't like it I'll just go back and do something else right it's not perfect but neither am I so it's very Anna What color should owls be anyway? Should they be purple? <laughs> purple owls? Should I have colored them before I did the edges? I was gonna die cut them, but I don't know where my dyes are. <laughs> so if I find my dyes, I will uh, I will die cut them. I thought I had pulled the dyes for these, but um, you know, that requires getting my machine out. Good. I don't know where the dyes are for it. Honestly, I'll probably die cut them and I could fussy cut them, but so, um, yeah. It's kind of cool. Should we redo the sentiment? Okay, how should I do this? If I'm going to do this, what should I do with it? I don't think I want to do embossing. I could try doing embossing, but I think I need to restamp it because it's definitely um, um, too blurry. So maybe I'll just stamp it on here. This is one of those practice ones I did or stamp it on this. I like to do that sometimes because it, it'll kind of pop off the background if I stamp it on that. I know, right? I just can't, like, I can't, I know I had the dies for them. I've specifically pulled them. I think I did for the owls. I did for the flowers. I don't, I can't remember if I did for the owls or not, but i um, pretty sure I did. I, I don't think I would have bought it to use if I hadn't gotten the dies too. Um, okay. Let's. Also, I learned with Ranger, you really need to, um, with the archival, and I found this with the, um, I have some Altenew 
media, multimedia, mixed media ink. This one, mixed media ink. Both of these, you really have to heat set it. Um, otherwise, it's just... Um, it come it it doesn't it's not permanent when it's, and I it can smudge and I've definitely smudged a lot so before so I learned my lesson with that one I think I want to use the mic the multimedia the mixed media ink this time it's it's a little more like a pigment ink I think um. This is water-based pigment ink. I have a hard time with pigment inks. I feel like they don't dry, but maybe I just don't know how to use them right. Oh, it's smushed. Okay, try it again. Maybe I pushed down too hard on it. See, isn't it nice to have like somebody who's crafting and doesn't really know what the hell they're doing? <laughs> okay, I know this is this is becoming a very long live. Sorry, guys. I hope you don't mind. Okay, won't push so hard this time. Or wiggle it. Yay! Third time's a charm. Oh. Here we go. All right, tell me guys, are you a, thank you. Are you a uh, clean up as you go or clean up when you're done or leave it until later kind of person? Um, I am definitely, I think, becoming a leave it until later kind of person. But, um, oh, here's a question. Does anybody know? If you can um, emboss with this. It just says you can use it on lots of, lots of surfaces. Someday I'll learn how to do embossing. That's on my list. Other than just randomly embossing stuff. All right. Oh, the paper is hot. And then you cut it at some unspecified size because, you know, maybe we like to eyeball things. And maybe I don't like, I don't always like the actually like the perfectly cut look. So. I should be a clean up as you go person so that I'm not constantly moving things around. All right, even though that was my favorite part of the background, it's kind of got messed up when I trimmed it too much. So I'm gonna try it again. And we're gonna trim one of these at the right size, which is six and a quarter, not, not five and a quarter, so that it can actually be the right mat size. And four and a quarter. I want there to be more blue. Okay, we're gonna do it this way. I was impressed when I watch YouTube videos seeing how well how quickly everybody cuts their papers. Well you cut it at this and you cut it at this and they do it without even looking at the measurements and I'm like, how do they do that? Okay. 
that's better. Yes. And since I like that, yeah, I might even cut it a little more. That's very small. Okay, so now the owls have a bigger playground. And then like that. Clean up after each project. <laughs> Try to clean up after each project, but don't always succeed. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I'm kind of finding that I'm a, I should be cleaning things up as I go, but I'm trying to do it quickly. So, okay. So I think this looks a lot better. Y'all like this? Yay. And then, um, even I think the little owls could probably stay. You know what? Um, would be fun. Let's see. This is the kind of heat embossing I can do if I can find my pen. It's where you just do a little bit of my heat. I don't know where it is. I'll find it, maybe. <laughs> I have just like an embossing pen and then just add a few little touches here and there with ink, with embossing with the pen. But I don't know. I'm looking around for it and it's not where I would usually have it. So, you know. Um, life. Oops. Okay. Does anybody know how to use the perfect pearls because those could also work if I had my perfect pearl stuff but I don't but okay or <gasps> glitter drops mm, that would be fun I have some embossing powder I could just smear embossing powder on it that would be fun okay um yeah so like this I don't know do we like it like that or do we want to I think I want to like tear it because that's more of what I like to do is tearing things well, um, okay, I think for now, because I've been at this for almost an hour now, this will be a long video, um, this is a good start. So I'm going to stop here and go actually do store stuff. But um, maybe we'll pick this back up tomorrow for the Facebook Live or next Tuesday. Well, can do next Tuesday. Um, or I'll just post a picture of the finished card. So I appreciate you guys hanging around with me and seeing what kind of crazy mess I make. Um, I think I learned a little bit about what I want, how to do distress sprays. Um, and it was really interesting to see that the gloss spray didn't actually uh, work as well over the, over the ink as I thought it would. It just kind of soaked in, which is, I thought, an interesting effect. Um, interesting result, let me say. If I find those dyes, I will definitely cut out those, some of those owls too. So, um, all right, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to sign off and thank you guys for joining me today and in on the fly <laughs> and I'll see you maybe tomorrow during the, um, during the Facebook live. You have a good day too. Bye.